Today we're focusing on the artist Georgia O'Keefe and we're going to look at some art activities that we can do based in the primary school classroom. Georgia O'Keefe had very diverse subject matter. She used flowers, landscapes, bones and isolated or desolated buildings. So for today's art making activity I have found this gorgeous uh, bone and I've picked two roses from the garden. So we've got our natural element, the flowers, and we've also got our bone structure as well. For the lower grades, it might be best just to uh, work with the subject matter of flowers and landscapes as I'm as they might not be too comfortable working with bones. Whereas grade five and sixes will find subject matter to be quite intriguing. And for critical analysis, you get quite a good feedback from them. So what I've done today is I've obviously um, come up with a model and I've designed it in a way that I can sketch. So I put the flowers in the eye sockets here for visual representation. Now, first off, what I've done is I've just done a basic abstract sketch because Georgia O'Keeffe's style is very simple and abstract with modernism and precision lines. So it's a very simple, very abstract drawing. From there, I've simplified it again, but also I've changed it. I've kind of mentally cropped the image and I've just drawn a side view here. So we've obviously we've got the eye socket and the flower, the muzzle, and then down here we've got the teeth as well. With primary school children, I'd probably just get images of flowers or landscapes. First off, they can start drawing the flowers quite in quite detail. And then as they progress, getting more and more abstract and simpler as well. So this is a design process as well of creating and making artwork. What we're going to do today for grade fives and sixes, they've got a opportunity to sketch or what you can do and this is very good for the lower grades as well is to take photos of their arrangements so I've taken some photos here and what I'm going to do is some cropping now Georgia O'Keeffe's work involved cropping where she'd use one large scale image and from there she'd crop a section that she liked and she further developed it. So here I've just got a cardboard square and I've cut out a small, medium and relatively large square. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to practice doing some sketching and then we're going to work with the medium watercolours and gouache because Georgia O'Keeffe used those colours and they help with keep with the style of Georgia O'Keeffe which is abstract, simplicity and of course vibrant colour and clear lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop the image like so and I'm just going to do a quick sketch whilst looking at the image. Cropping is a fantastic way to develop a series of paintings and also helps students to really pay attention and focus on the lines, colour and texture of the artwork. So it's a very good developmental process. Okay. So I've quickly done my sketch here of the cropped image. Now I find it really handy to draw a square on my piece of paper and to work from there so that I know where I can start and finish a line, etc. as well. So this is a very good creative process that you can teach the children. Okay, so today we're gonna to be using watercolors first and then we're going to be using gouache. So to keep with the the theme of Georgia O'Keeffe, we're going to be really focusing on having clear lines and vibrant colours. First off, I'm just going to paint in the colour of the bones. Now you can do this activity with landscapes, desolated buildings, flowers. It's a really great developmental process and it also is good for constructing and designing work which is part of the VALS curriculum. By working with watercolours it's 
fantastic for children as they get to learn about consistency of the watercolour. If I want a nice clear wash, I obviously add more water. If I want my colour and line to be more vibrant, I obviously add less water. You really want to encourage your children to explore this medium as well. Georgia O'Keefe used quite a variety of mediums in her work and it's also good to take upon this in our own classrooms as well. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to do some more clear lines and shading. Like with most, most artists, it's a really good idea to note their style and technique, but I also would like children to try and make it their own as well. Again, this is part of the developmental process, and it's really about appreciating her artwork as well. Georgia O'Keeffe was interested in a lot of natural forms, and like myself, I'm very interested in the simplicity and beauty of flowers and also the lifelike qualities of bones as well. Okay, so I've already done my uh, skull component of this drawing and now I'm going to do the flower. So as we can see over here in the flowers, we've got quite a pinky peach colour now obviously we'd want to spend more time developing our colour and going through a colour process. So these are other lessons that you can add on to your uh, artwork lessons. Okay. So what I'm just doing now is I've already pre-made a pink wash. Like with most colours, they don't, they don't come already mixed. You have to create them yourself. And this is the most fun part of the painting process is playing and experimenting with colours. Okay, so I'm just trying to add a little bit less water because I want to have more vibrant pictures and obviously I don't want the watercolour to run. Now this can be done with um, pencils, oil pastels, it doesn't have to be with watercolours because like most artists children will probably develop a different, you know, their own preferred, preferred sorry, medium. And it's important that as teachers we let them, you know, experiment with different mediums but also when developing an artwork, particularly with the final process, they might like to use their preferred medium. Generally with watercolours I prefer to do these on parchment but obviously cost wise it wouldn't be very effective. So what I suggest for teachers is have kids experiment and practice the cropping technique on A4 pictures and then once they find one that they really like I recommend that you develop this artwork onto parchment so you have a final product a lot about art is displaying the final product. Okay, so I'm really trying to look at the shadings and the different lines here with the flowers. This is a very experimental process and it is very fun and engaging to do. Okay, so here we go. This is my final product. See here and here. As you can see, it's very simple and very abstract style. We've got the clear lines and we've got the very vibrant colours.